Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are back here to take another look at villagers. And in fact, today we are planning on getting every single villager in this village, with the exception of the nitwit, to the master level of their profession. The nitwit's already mastered life, I think. He's already living his best life over there in the yellow house. I think today we're going to start by systematically going through each of these villagers, trading until they reach their master level, and we can talk about exactly what those trades are and how you can get the most out of them. So we're starting with the Fletcher. The Fletcher mostly trades sticks for emeralds in the early stages, and he will also let you buy some arrows from him. So let's go and get some saplings we can use to really quickly get a bunch of wood. And one thing's for sure, if we're going to be going back multiple times per episode, I better dig a tunnel from this nether portal to the one by my house. But on the outer perimeter of the village here, I'm going to set up a little farming area for spruce saplings. We're going to grow those a block apart, even though you can grow them all next to each other, they will grow naturally a little bit faster if you leave one block of space around each of the sets of saplings. Alternatively, if you have a bone meal farm like our skeleton spawner, you can always just bone meal a bunch of the saplings if you want them to grow faster. But these are going to leave pods all everywhere when they grow, so make sure you're doing it in an area that you don't mind the grass color changing. While those grow, I'm going to cut down this wall of acacia trees I planted just so I had enough material for the fence. And that will get us started with this Fletcher's trades. I had to go find him since it's now meeting time, but the villagers will still trade with you even if they're meeting around their town bell. Throughout this video, I'm going to be using a quick trade shortcut Cut, which is, I believe, only available on Java Edition, and that's that if you do a single trade, if you press the space bar, it will end up refilling that trade so that you can make it again. And so if I make a bunch of sticks, it's really easy to trade them with the Fletcher just by holding down shift and alternating between space bar and left click. I'm not sure if there's a way to quick trade like that on Bedrock Edition, let me know if there is. But as you'll see, this guy has now locked his stick trades. He is no longer receiving sticks in exchange for emeralds, we'll have to wait until the morning for him to refresh that trade. In the meantime, he started accepting a lot of flint for a single emerald, or he will sell us a bow in exchange for two emeralds. So I think I might do that to try and get him through the apprentice phase and into the journeyman rank. And since we're going to be getting a bunch of materials that we don't actually need right away throughout this process, I am going to be putting a chest by each of these workstations so that we can store some of the leftover items from their trades, with the exception of the fisherman's barrel because that's still available for storage. So I'll put these four bows in here, obviously they're unenchanted so you can use them for whatever, you can craft dispensers with them, enchant them yourself, or just use them as fuel in a furnace if you want to. So after a while of replay planting and regrowing these saplings, you'll probably have more spruce wood than you know what to do with, and the thing you do with it is trade with this Fletcher. Because every time you hear a villager go up to their workstation and a noise happens, you'll often see that popping up in the subtitles as well, that means they should have refreshed their trades, and in this case, the apprentice Fletcher is now offering a discount. You'll also be able to tell how far along the progression track they are with their profession by the colour of the little gem that's attached to their belt. If we look at each of these here, they should have a stone colored gem, this kind of gray one here. And that's on every single villager in the village right now, with the exception of the Fletcher over here, because we've traded with him enough to upgrade his to iron color to show that he is an apprentice. Now, despite the fact that his early trades are now giving him less experience every time we trade with them, the stick trade is so cheap that it's really easy to just level him up using that, and we're going to be doing that for the rest of the trades. You'll notice there that his gem turns to gold to indicate he is now a journeyman Fletcher, and he's receiving string in exchange for emeralds, or trading emeralds for crossbows now. Just to illustrate the difference between some of these later trades and the earlier ones, XP-wise, look at the amount of XP this crossbow gives us. Now I'm going to trade some sticks with him, and <laughs> look at that, the tiniest chip. But then of course if we're trading multiple sets of sticks with him, all the experience is going to add up pretty fast. And that's going to be the case with each of these villagers. A lot of the times their early trades will be a nice way to get them started, but if there are any trades you can take advantage of further down the list, you're going to get much more experience from them if that's your goal. The gem on the Fletcher's belt is now upgraded to emeralds to indicate he is an expert Fletcher. He will now receive feathers for emeralds, which is really useful if you've got a chicken farm set up somewhere, and he will sell you an enchanted bow. Now the enchantment on this bow is still pretty low level, it's only a power 2 bow, it does get us a huge chunk of experience to go with this trade. So we're going to buy one enchanted bow from him, but to be quite honest, I don't see myself buying a lot of enchanted bows. We're just going to stick to sticks. While we're in the early stages of trading with these villagers, it's also important to get a source of emeralds, because there are some villagers who will only start by selling items to you for emeralds, instead of giving you an option to get emeralds from them. So effectively, this Fletcher is going to be our source of currency for the village. And a couple of batches of sticks later, they are well on the way to earning that master rank and getting us their final trades. 
And now we can take a look at the final trades this Fletcher offers, because they are offering a crossbow with some more high-level enchantments than the bow. This has piercing and unbreaking, and also arrows of swiftness. This is a concept that we haven't touched on yet. It is possible to craft these yourself. However, by trading an emerald and five arrows, which I don't actually have, I could buy some from earlier up in their trade sequence here. So if we put some arrows and some emeralds in their trading interface, they will give us arrows which when you shoot something with them applies a potion effect for the stated duration. Let's say for example I look directly up and I shoot myself with a bow. There we go, you can see I now have a swiftness effect in the top right hand corner and that will last for exactly one minute. So if I want a little extra speed boost all I have to do is buy some arrows from this guy and then shoot myself with one I guess. That said you'll notice that now we've bought five arrows, we've used one and four remain. So even though I have infinity on my bow, the potion tipped arrows are not affected by infinity. They will deplete much the same as they do if you don't have infinity on your bow. So we'll do our last set of trades with this guy and it looks like that is him locked up for the day. After a certain amount of trades, villagers won't refresh until the following day, so best not to worry about that. And hey, this guy now has the diamond gem on his belt. He is our first master villager. But the next one on our list is going to be the librarian. So let's see what this guy has to trade. Right now he's asking for paper or he's selling us bookshelves. We might want to re-roll his trades if we can so that we can get hold of a book trade early. Maybe one that isn't Curse of Vanishing. Well, in the morning he's trading us Respiration 3 for 31 emeralds, which is a pretty steep price, but we've already talked about how to get some discounts from villagers. I think we're going to lock that in just for the sake of showing what their trades are. And I'm going to do that using a bookshelf trade. I actually really like having bookshelf trades, especially around librarians, because if you want to trade their enchanted books, you can just break the bookshelves down into books. And having a bookshelf trade around in the early game definitely takes the hassle out of building multiple enchanting setups. Unfortunately, this book trade is looking a little expensive right now, so we're going to need more emeralds from the Fletcher. But having done that, we're going to trade this book just the once, and you'll notice it doesn't increase the XP any more than the bookshelf trade does. Respiration is a helmet enchantment that allows you to hold your breath underwater for longer, and we won't be needing multiple of those books considering I only really need the one helmet. While I wait for the Fletcher's trades to refresh, I'm running around this field killing any cows or pigs that I come across, also chickens in case we need some arrows, and shearing any of the sheep that I find, so we can get a head start on the trades for the leather worker, the butcher, and the shepherd. And if we wanted to do this a smart, long-term, and sustainable way, we could always bring these animals back to the village and start breeding and killing them there. But I'm not necessarily thinking about trading with any of these villagers long-term, because most of their trades require quite a lot of effort. Anyway, once again, we can trade some sticks to the Fletcher, which means we should be able to buy some more bookshelves from the Librarian, and he's almost out of Novice and into Apprentice. We can also look ahead to some of the other trades our villagers have and see if they favour the environment around us. Say like this farmer, for example. He's looking for wheat and beetroot, but right now we're mostly growing carrots in this village, so I think we'll probably re-roll his trades as well to see if he'll accept carrots as a trade instead. There we go, we got 22 carrots there, and that will allow us to fortune some of these fully grown crops, try and pick them up quickly to make sure that the farmer doesn't collect them and redistribute them to the village. And I know I said we'd do this systematically, but the farmer is kind of off to the side here, so let's get the trade started with him. That at least gives me a couple more emeralds I can trade with the librarian to finally take them out of novice and into apprentice stage, where they start to offer other books and also buy books in exchange for emeralds. This is something we can take advantage of considering that they were selling us bookshelves a second ago, so if we break these down, we'll get three books from each and we can trade four of them back to the librarian in a kind of trading loop. It's not perfect considering that we are buying bookshelves at a much higher rate than we are selling books back to them, but at least it gets them through the next stage of apprentice and into journeyman phase. The journeyman librarian has added another enchanted book to his trades, but he will also now sell you glass, which can be really really valuable considering that sand is how you get glass the rest of the time. You have to smelt it block by block and sand is also not a renewable resource. So whilst it's abundant in the world, you can find it in oceans, on beaches, in deserts. Getting hold of a large amount of glass can be a bit of a headache and so trading it from librarians is also a really nice thing. 
Now, further down the line, because we've traded that much glass, he is offering us a Curse of Vanishing book, which is not the ideal enchanted book trade, but there's no way of refreshing them now that he's locked into these trades. And he will also sell us a clock for a discount at this point for emeralds. Once again, that lower trade is going to get us a lot more experience than some of the previous trades, but I think glass is just so useful to have, I might continue trading that. And once we've got all of that glass and the librarian is upgraded to master tier, he will trade us a name tag. So if you've had bad luck getting these from fish or dungeon loot, buying them from villagers for 20 emeralds or a discount is going to be one of your best ways of getting them. So now we move on to the leather worker, whose first trade is six leather for a single emerald, but thankfully I got a decent amount of leather from the cows around here and each of those trades fills up that XP bar pretty quickly. An apprentice leather worker will start asking for flint and will start trading you some different apparel. The flint trade is not to be overlooked here, it's actually pretty powerful. We can find a little bit of flint in the loot chest for this nether portal here, but as always flint will come from gravel and so one of the ways I have found of getting hold of a decent quantity of flint, aside from just shoveling it up with gravel and see how much you get is trading with a Fletcher. Unfortunately, this Fletcher doesn't have the trade, but if we were to recruit another one, they sometimes have a trade where they will buy 10 gravel and an emerald off of you in exchange for turning that gravel into flint for arrowheads. And that's actually a pretty convenient way of getting flint for the other professions that want it, like leather workers. Alternatively, if you have a Fortune 3 tool, any piece of gravel will always give you flint. So that's another way of doing it. And with a Fortune 3 shovel, you can tear through a patch of gravel. So returning to the leather, the worker with 22 flint, you can see that that does get us a lot of experience. It's more than getting hold of one of these leather caps will, although we can do that multiple times, whereas I'm not sure I'm all that happy grinding for this much flint. <laughs> but at this point, I'm pretty sure you get the idea. This is how villager trading tends to go. It's a slow process upgrading these fellas, but the results can be worth it. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time between clips upgrading each and every one of their trades, and we'll see what each of them offers us once we reach master level. Hey folks, welcome back. So I've more or less traded with every single villager to master level at this point. The only one I still haven't managed to upgrade at all is this butcher over here, and that is because I didn't really get the best starter trades with him. We started, of course, with chicken and rabbit being the trades, and honestly, rabbits are a little bit difficult to find. You will occasionally spot them jumping around in meadows and tiger biomes, but very infrequently. They are much more common in deserts and snowy tundras. I found the best way to approach them is to bring a carrot or a dandelion and hold it in your offhand. Then they will quietly hop up to you and you can violently betray them. Typically though, I found that rabbits are a little bit accident prone. So when left to their own devices, they can come to a nasty end anyway. But in the meantime, they're not all that common and it's kind of difficult to get hold of them. So I don't recommend starting with those trades for the butcher if you can possibly help it. It's a lot easier to start with something that you are already farming like raw beef or raw pork, for example. But in this case, I was able to grind it out. We did did end up getting a bunch of chicken and rabbit, and the rabbit trade isn't going to be all that useful to us once he's upgraded to apprentice level anyway. At this point, he's going to start buying coal from us, or alternatively, we can buy some of that chicken back as cooked chicken, which now that I think about it, is a pretty good food source to have. So once we've got a few more emeralds from our friend the Fletcher, we're going to buy all the cooked chicken we can, which should hopefully upgrade him to the next level. A journeyman butcher will now start asking for raw beef. There you go. So that's why we've been stockpiling that. That's a pretty good trade, actually. That gets us a lot of experience along his XP track. He's an expert butcher and now he will start offering to buy dried blocks of kelp for an emerald. That meat trade is still really valuable in terms of XP though, so that should get us the rest of the way towards making him a master butcher. But now with a couple more cows taken care of and one final beef trade, we should now have every villager in this place upgraded to master level, and I can go through each of their trades with you. Now, a couple of things to note before we start here. First of all, take a look at my levels. <laughs> I've got 52 levels right now. Trading with these villagers basically all morning has been incredibly lucrative for me. And if I pause the game and go into my statistics panel here, you'll actually be able to see how many times I have talked to and traded with villagers. I've talked to them 652 times. That's just interacting with them by right clicking to open that trading GUI. And in total, I have now traded with villagers 1,001 times. Now, of course, those aren't just the trades I've done with these villagers. It includes the trades with the folks I've done back at my base. We have the Fletcher and Regis the Farmer over there. We have the Mending Book Trader in the Igloo basement. But most of those trades have been here 
as a result of this, and that's mostly, honestly, been trading with the Fletcher to get sticks turned into emeralds so I can buy stuff from the other villagers. The other thing to note is that the trades I've received from these villagers aren't the only trades it is possible to get. For a full list of the possible trades from every villager, I recommend checking out the page on the Minecraft wiki related to trading, because that will tell you some of the stuff that is not present on some of these villagers' lists, and if there's a specific item you're looking for, one of them might have it and just not be trading it to me. If you're interested in the long-term goals of villager trading, one of those might potentially be to get a villager for every single possible trade, which would be a tricky thing to do considering some of them trade coloured items of which there are 16 variants. But I think I'm going to wait for the sun to set and for the next workday to begin, because it's going to be a lot easier keeping track of all these villagers if they're over here standing near their workstations. In the meantime though, as dusk falls, we're going to try and tame a cat. Stray cats will start to appear in villages with a high enough population, and I believe a couple of stray cats even appear in a village when it first generates. In order to tame one of these cats and have it as a pet, all we need to do is approach it carefully with some fish. And cats will sort of wander around on their own, so they can be a little tricky to approach. But if you run after them, they have a tendency to scamper away. They'll start to run away from you like this, and it becomes more difficult to get hold of them. But just like in real life, it's about being patient and letting the cat come to you. And if we right-click it a couple of times with a fish, there we go. We get the best friends forever advancement for taming, our first pet. Now I can right click on the cat to get it to sit where it is, or if it's standing on all fours, it can follow me around. And so if we head back over to the center of the village here to trade with our villagers, the cat will follow us. I'm gonna let it sit here for now though, because cats have a habit of wandering around and sitting on chests sometimes, and if they do that, then you can't open the chests. So they can be a little bit of a menace at times. Okay, the workday has begun. So let's go through these trades. We've already spoken about the Fletcher and the Librarian, so we won't get into them. But let's talk to the leather worker. Now all of his trades are available. He will buy rabbit hide from us So that's something we could use this rabbit hide for because aside from that it doesn't really have that many uses You can craft it in a two by two into a single piece of leather But it's already too easy to get leather from cows further down his list of trades He will also buy turtle scutes from you Which are what you get from breeding turtles and watching them grow up and he will sell you leather horse armor Which can be dyed a variety of colors a saddle and finally another leather item usually a helmet But since there's a limited amount of use uses for leather in Minecraft, you don't tend to get super useful trades out of this guy. He also has a double chest instead of a single chest because this is the amount of hats I had to buy from him to upgrade his profession. Obviously we could have done that slightly easier if I was able to grind more flint, but I didn't really feel like going out and getting three stacks of flint just to trade this guy. Now we come to the cleric, who is in my opinion one of the more useful traders in the entire group of professions. You can buy redstone dust, you can buy lapis, you can even buy glowstone without having to go and get it from the nether and further down his list he has ender pearls available for sales, so if you have trouble fighting endermen, it's possible to buy them once you have enough emeralds. His master trades include buying nether wart from you once you're growing that for potion brewing, and he will sell you bottles of enchanting, which are effectively bottled experience. Buy a couple of those, throw them on the ground like a splash potion, and you'll get a little bit of XP towards your levels bar. The cleric also buys rabbit's feet, so we can basically use every part of the rabbit, selling it to various villagers here, but honestly, I didn't get any rabbit's feet when I was killing them in the desert in that previous clip, so unfortunately we don't have any way of taking advantage of that trade right now. The fisherman kind of does what he says on the tin. You can sell him coal so that he can cook fish for you, presumably, and you can sell him string so that he can make fishing line. He will also buy raw fish that you have acquired and sometimes sell them back to you cooked, but he also, crucially, sells campfires, which are kind of a neat block. We'll talk more about them in a future episode. He will sell you an enchanted fishing rod for enough emeralds, and after buying the rarer types of fish, he will also sell you a boat as his master trade. And the type of boat that you purchase varies by biome. So this guy is selling an acacia boat because he is a savannah villager, and acacia is the more prominent type of wood here. If we were to go to a plains biome village, they would sell oak boats to you. If you go to a tiger village, they sell spruce boats. Next up we have the shepherd, who was a little bit tricky to nail down, but I decided in the end to re-roll his trades until he was trading me for white wool, since white is by far the most common color of sheep that you will find in the wild. 
He will always ask for the natural wool colors though, so you'll only ever see gray, brown, black, and white really appearing here. He will also sell you some shears, which I think is a very useful trade since shears break quite easily, they don't have a huge amount of durability, and it's kind of nice to save on iron. He will also buy different colored dyes from you once you're able to get hold of those, and he will sell you different colors of wool and woolen items. In this case, he's selling two different colors of bed, which could be useful for expanding your village population if you haven't done much sheep farming yourself. He'll sell me some white banners, which I've already gotten from him a couple of times to complete his trades. And finally, a painting, which can be crafted by the player using wool and sticks. Moving on to three of the more crucial villager professions, the armorer, the toolsmith, and the weaponsmith. These three blacksmith professions are really important for late game stuff, because as you can see, once we got past the early trades for iron and iron chest plates, chainmail shows up, shields, and finally a complete suit of diamond armor with some very basic enchantments on it. These trades are always going to be the more expensive ones, but right now he's giving us a discount just because of the amount of trading we've done in this area. None of these villagers have been zombified and cured again. We're doing this all kind of naturally. So as you might expect, for a handful of emeralds each, we can effectively save about 24 diamonds, which is roughly the amount you would need to create a full suit of diamond armor. They've gone back to wandering around again, so I'll try and track them down, but the toolsmith is next on our list and he is selling us a diamond axe, a diamond shovel, and a diamond pickaxe at the end of his trades. This is actually not the ideal setup for trades because the toolsmith and the weaponsmith, wherever he is, he's the one with the eye patch. This guy, they will both sell you diamond axes, but there is a chance for the toolsmith to also sell you a diamond hoe. So if you want the full set of trades from each of these professions, there's a chance that you'll be able to get a diamond hoe from a toolsmith, and you might want to get a second toolsmith if your first one doesn't have them. Each of the blacksmiths will also sell you a village bell if you want to get one of those. They will also ask for diamonds in exchange for emeralds, which is a trade I never take advantage of because you can get emeralds for trading sticks. Why would I trade them diamonds for this? And it's also worth noting that one of the early trades they ask for is iron. And this remains a trade that it's pretty useful to have just for the sake of leveling up their experience bar. It stays pretty lucrative the entire time, but getting hold of a large amount of iron to trade with your villagers can be a bit of a pain. Luckily for us, Iron sort of delivers itself to you in these villages in the form of iron golems, and so I devised a very simple way of getting iron from these iron golems without having to fight them one on one, because that is a fight which, without the right strategy, you are probably going to lose. So over here, I created a little fenced off area with one of the campfires that the fisherman traded me. You can make campfires yourself, you can look up the recipe in a crafting recipe book, but with some leads from the wandering trader and a fenced off area like this, two by two in the center, four fences on each side, and a couple of grass blocks, one block separate from the fence, so they do not connect. We can actually drag the iron golems into this enclosure since their hitbox is large enough that they'll walk straight over the fence and then standing on the campfire they'll be unable to leave the area and will take damage until they die and turn into a couple of iron ingots. Now I recognize that this does seem a little bit brutal. It's kind of painful to watch and so typically you might not want to hang around for it but the villagers and the iron golem themselves don't have a great deal of reaction to this. Villagers don't get sad if their iron golem ends up getting destroyed somehow because their job really is to protect the village, so they're going to get harmed by hostile mobs anyway. When the iron golem eventually dies, though, it will leave behind a couple of iron ingots and a poppy, and that can be really useful to have around if you want to do some trading with the blacksmith villagers, but don't want to sell them any of the iron you've already gathered. It is also a very convenient way of taking out the iron golems once they start to generate around the village, because after a while, you may find you have a lot of iron golems wandering around, and sooner or later, the villagers will just spawn another one anyway. This showed up within a matter of seconds after that other one disappeared appeared, so it's kind of nice to have a virtually limitless supply of iron. Taking advantage of villagers spawning iron golems is actually how players will farm iron in the later stages of a Minecraft world, and so it's important to know about these mechanics ahead of time so that we can put those into practice later. Anyway, we can trade a bit more iron to this toolsmith. There we go, we got a couple more emeralds, and with that we could buy some enchanted iron or enchanted diamond tools. Likewise, as I mentioned, the weaponsmith will sell us some enchanted diamond stuff a little further down the line, and we can always grindstone off these enchanted and re-enchant them at our enchanting setup for level 30 enchants, which are going to be a lot more effective. We'll take a quick sidebar over here to talk to the farmer, who's currently balancing on top of his composter. Once you've traded a few times with the farmer, they will open up more farm supplies to trade both for emeralds and in exchange for emeralds. So 
I can now sell this guy pumpkins and melons, which I've been growing back on my crop farms near my starter house. He will sell me apples and cookies, which we can make ourselves using cocoa beans and wheat. He will also sell you full cakes, suspicious stew, and two golden items. We have golden carrots here and glistering melon slices. These aren't actually food. Glistering melon slices are used as an ingredient in potion brewing, so we'll talk about those a little bit later. Golden carrots are also a potion brewing ingredient, but they can be eaten, and they are one of the better foods in Minecraft. Golden carrots restore a lot of saturation, which is a hidden behind the scenes value that basically determines how quickly you get hungry again after eating. I believe the only food source that is better than either of those is something that is occasionally traded by the butcher, and that is rabbit stew. So we might save some of this raw rabbit to make some of that of our own since our butcher is not trading it. Anyway, let's talk about the cartographer next. This cartographer started selling us empty maps, but once we unlocked a few more trades, they started selling us maps with contents. These are unique maps that cannot be crafted by the player, instead they can only be purchased here at a cartographer for some emeralds and the addition of a compass. Those will give you the coordinates, or at least the map location, of an ocean monument and a woodland mansion if you buy each of those. And while you might encounter those naturally while exploring the world, it can be very useful to have a map that leads you directly to one, although it won't always lead you to the nearest ocean monument to this cartographer, so bear that in mind. Further down here we have two banner patterns similar to the shepherd, the cartographers will trade you different colored banners, and they will also trade you a unique banner pattern that once again cannot be crafted by the player. This globe banner pattern is unique to the master level cartographer traits. We'll be talking about banners when we come back to looking at the loom in a future episode. For now, let's talk to the stonemason, or the mason, I suppose, although most of what they trade in is stone and stone types. So right here, obviously, we have the clay balls and brick trades. They will buy stone from you in exchange for emeralds, which personally I never do because it's quite a lot of stone and I use a lot of stone for building. They will sell you chiseled stone bricks, which you can obviously create yourself, but it's a really useful trade to get you to the next tiers. And I've ended up trading a couple of stacks of chiseled stone bricks just in the process of upgrading this mason. Further down the list though, they will start to trade you colored terracotta, often of colors that do not exist naturally in the mesa, and they will sell you the glazed variant of those terracotta blocks, which you can create yourself by smelting any kind of dyed terracotta in a furnace. Lastly, for their master trades, two very sought after trades, they will give you blocks of quartz and quartz pillars, which make it a lot easier to acquire large amounts of quartz blocks than it is to go mining for quartz in the nether. And finally, even though we've spoken to them sort of recently, let's talk about the butcher, who for a start will buy a bunch of the different types of raw meat, will often sell you some of that meat cooked in exchange. The rabbit stew trade I mentioned is one of the more valuable ones, and once you get to master level, he will start buying sweet berries off of you. That can be very useful if you've encountered or found this village in a tiger biome where the sweet berries are common. Once you have hold of a couple of sweet berry bushes, you can bone meal them to get a pretty regular supply of sweet berries, and then you'll end up with a ton of them to trade with a butcher. We can even farm them automatically, which is something I'll get into later. So that has been a pretty full day of activity for me, and we now have every single type of villager. But once again, remember that these are not all of the trades we can end up with. Like I said, there are a couple that are missing from the toolsmith or the butcher, which might be desirable to you, and it's always worth dialing in exactly what types of villagers you want to visit regularly. Personally, I cannot live in a world without cleric villagers for trading with redstone, librarian villagers for getting enchanted books, the blacksmiths, and honestly the Fletcher. I think the Fletcher is a much underrated profession. Considering how easy it is to get hold of wood, it's really easy to get emeralds from them for sticks. And of course, farmer villagers are really useful if you've already been farming a bunch of crops, and obviously if you zombify and cure any of these villagers, they're likely to give you discounts that will last a lifetime on resources that are very cheap for you to acquire. If we had to skip any of these, honestly, I would skip the Shepherd, because their trades aren't all that useful. You can make a lot of this stuff yourself very cheaply, and you've been farming sheep from a very early stage in your world. The Butcher seems like he'd be really useful for the villagers themselves, even though they mostly eat carrots around here, but honestly, a Butcher is not that useful if you're a player. You end up farming a lot of these animals so that you can have food, rather than so the villagers can have food, so these aren't always the best trades to go in for. For the same reasons, I don't find the Fisherman all that useful. Occasionally, he'll have a useful enchanted rod, and it's kind of cool that he trades campfires, but most of the rest of these trades aren't all that necessary. And finally, the most skippable of all of them is probably the leather worker. Since he only ever trades you leather stuff, he's really difficult to upgrade, 
If you want saddles from him, that's fair enough, but I get tons of those just from fishing. You can actually craft leather horse armor yourself, so that's not even any unique trade. All of the dyed leather armor and stuff like that is not really worth having, and you can craft it yourself anyway. So personally, I find the leather worker is a bit of a ripoff. But those are just my two cents, and villagers can honestly be a really useful resource for any world, however you end up using them. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at every villager's trades here in this world, and we'll be seeing a lot more of villagers in future, I am sure. But for now, thank you so much for watching watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.